It's not just time that behaves strangely according to special relativity, it's space as well. According to special relativity, lengths contract in the direction of motion. Hello folks and welcome back. I'm Brian Roberts and I'm afraid the weirdness continues. It gets weirder? It's gonna keep getting weirder for some time now, so strap in. So if my spaceship is headed in some direction and I have a ruler oriented in the same direction, then that ruler will shrink when the spaceship is set in motion. That's called length contraction. It too is a consequence of nothing more than the light postulate and the principle of relativity. It's a little bit more involved to understand why it's true, but let's give it a try. For this thought experiment, we're gonna take two light clocks set up perpendicular to each other. A bulb flashes and light beams are sent up along the edges of each clock where they hit a mirror and come back to the origin again where they meet. The two light beams return to the same place at the same time. There's no way anybody could disagree about that. It's the same event. Now I set this apparatus in motion along the direction of one of the light clocks. And let's make it fast, really fast. 99.5% the speed of light fast. Now someone on the spaceship will observe these two light clocks to be behaving normally, as if they were at rest. But for someone on Earth watching this apparatus in motion, a strange thing will happen. Think about that light clock that's oriented in the direction of motion. The light beam leaves the bulb and heads out towards the mirror in a hurry. But that mirror is moving fast. It's moving at 99.5% the speed of light. So although the light beam travels faster, it travels at the speed of light, it has a lot farther distance to travel. It already has to travel the ordinary length of the light clock, 186,000 miles. But now the light clock is in motion, it has to travel even farther to catch up with that mirror as it rushes away. So I have these two light beams on two light clocks. They reflect off the mirrors and they must come back to their point of origin at the same time. But one of them has a lot farther to travel. It has to travel the length of the light clock and then some. And moreover, the speed of light on both light clocks must be the same. So how can it be that the light beam travels the length of the light clock and then some and still manages to make it back in time? The only possibility is the length of the light clock must be shorter. The length of the light clock contracts so that the mirror isn't as far away as you might have thought it would be. And since now the light beam doesn't have as far to go, it can make it back in time to greet the other light beam at the same event at the same time. Now again, so far we've only shown that this very strange device with two light clocks set up perpendicular to each other will actually shrink in the direction of its motion. But what about an ordinary device? What about me when I get inside a spaceship and I travel at 99.5% the speed of light, will I actually shrink? Again, according to the principle of relativity, I must shrink. If I didn't, a person on the spaceship could tell that they were in motion, absolutely, by checking whether the light clock had gotten smaller compared to me. The only way for the laws of physics to be the same on that moving spaceship is for both the light clock and I, the observer, to shrink in the direction of motion. So I shrink. How do I shrink? Is it uniformly? Do I become a small person? Do I get shorter, thinner? Well, it depends on the direction of motion. If I'm sitting up straight and moving to my right, I will get thinner in the direction of motion. On the other hand, if I were moving upwards in the direction of my head, then I would get shorter. That is, objects shrink in the direction of motion. In summary, you've just learned about time dilation, that an observer viewing a reference frame in motion will view the clocks on that reference frame to have slowed and length contraction that an observer viewing a moving reference frame will view the lengths in the direction of motion to have contracted. And you might be thinking to yourself, but why? Why do they do that? Why does time slow? Why does space contract? And according to Einstein, the only answer is because of the light postulate and the principle of relativity. Einstein's formulation of relativity in terms of these two postulates is sometimes called a principled theory. It is a theory where all the consequences of the theory follow from two principles. And that makes sense given the context that Einstein was in. He had just discovered some of the basic effects that lead to the theory of quantum mechanics. So he knew that physics was about to be completely revolutionized. And if you're in that situation where you're worried about huge parts of physics getting thrown into the garbage bin, you might try to formulate the whole thing with as few principles as possible. Just the principle of relativity, and the light postulate. And that might not feel very satisfying. You might want some kind of force to pull space together or slow time down. Or you might want it to be a fact about the basic geometry of space-time. And it is a philosophical question how you interpret these properties of special relativity. Philosophers sometimes suggest that we should be looking for something more, constructive theories, where the meaning of constructive is not always so clear, but some kind of theory that allows a more elaborate explanation of where the effects of special relativity come from. In the next lectures we will give one such explanation in terms of the concept of a space-time Time. And if you think all this is weird, or incredibly exciting, that time slows down and length contracts, it's only the beginning. Come back next time when we'll talk about the concept of simultaneity and how it doesn't mean what you might think it does. Thanks folks, stay safe, we'll see you next time.